Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. The word congenital means present at birth, and congenital heart defects are the most common type of birth defects, affecting nearly 1% of births each year in the United States. And that means about 40,000 babies who are born with a structural heart defect every year in the United States. Joining us in studio is one of those 40,000 babies. A young girl who was born with a severe heart defect called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. And she is here with a specialist in the treatment of congenital heart defects, Dr. Tim Nelson. Welcome, Ava. Welcome to the radio show. Thank you. And Dr. Nelson, too. Great to be here. Welcome to both of you. Ava, how nice of you to join us. Mm -hmm. Is this the first time you've been on the radio? Mm Mm-hmm. And what about YouTube? You know Um, you're going to be on YouTube? Yeah. (laughs) And the other good news is you get to keep the cup. (laughs) So you're in, uh, what, first grade? Mm Mm-hmm. And what do you like to do when you're not in school? Um, I like to play school, play doctor, and do, in school we do like science and math and reading. Now you've had, since this all started, when you were born, you've had a lot of different doctors, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite? Dr. Nelson. Oh, look at Boy, that. Did you say the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Nelson, tell us, she was born with a, a defect called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Explain that to us. Yeah, so Ava's one of our special kids that is born with a single ventricle. Um, part of her heart wasn't uh, fully functioning when she was born, and so it required surgery to do reconstructive surgery to make her heart work because it only had one side of the heart that was was functional and so so, there should be four but she had three that's correct okay so the two main pumping chambers on the heart on the bottom the left side the main pumping chamber uh, she didn't have that was strong enough when she was born so the other pumping chamber the right ventricle has been uh, surgically put in position to do the work of her entire body and as you can see, um, those surgeries have done remarkable for Ava. Did you know that she had this uh, defect before she was born? Yes. And so when she was in her mommy's belly, uh, the ultrasounds are able to detect this condition because the left side of the heart is not fully developed. And so that allows us to do all the surgical planning on the day that she was born. And Ava had a very special first day. She um, actually had procedures on the day she was born um, because of her special condition. And so we had a lot of planning that went into that day when she was born. She had surgery the first day she was born. Correct. So Ava was in a special situation where she had a restrictive ASD or the side of the heart where she's dependent on blood coming through to make her single ventricle work was too small. And so she actually had to be taken to surgery right away to be able to make that larger. And so that was actually an extra step that um, not all kids with HLHS have to go through. Uh, So she's been through many, many procedures. And something that's interesting, I just found out when you arrived because he was along with you, you have two brothers, one who is your twin brother, and his heart was A-OK when you guys were born, correct? Yes. And you have a little brother who has got the same heart condition that you do. Yes. And so did he already have a surgery too? Um, Yeah, he had three open heart surgeries, and I've only had two. Mm, You are probably a great big sister to be able to tell him what's going to happen so that he doesn't get scared. Mm -hmm. Is it scary to have heart surgery? Not a big deal, huh? Not a big deal, especially if you got this guy in charge. Hmm. Do you remember any of those surgeries? When when was your second one? too little. Yeah. My second surgery was... Probably maybe the day I was born or a couple of days after that. Let's find out. Is that correct, Dr. Nelson? Yep. She said multiple ones. What, when was the last one you remember? What do you remember about a procedure? That it, you p- get put under stegia. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing, isn't it? You're asleep when all that happens. <laughs> and then you wake up and everybody's happy to see you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have to have any more heart surgeries? Um, well, we don't know if I'm having the third heart surgery or not. Do you like to do, is your heart okay right now? Do you feel like you can run and play and do all the stuff you want to do? Yeah, but I do get tired when I run Mm -hmm. a lot, so I don't run a lot. Mm -hmm. I heard you like to talk on the phone a lot. Yes. And who do you talk to? Um... 
I mostly talk to Grandpa. <laughs> um, yeah. Where does he live in Des Moines? Where you live, or no? He lives in Clive, Iowa. Clive, so it's pretty close. Mm-hmm. So, how do you make the decision, Dr. Nelson, whether or not she will need another surgery? And is it true that prior to the development of these surgical procedures to repair the heart, the only treatment for a child like this was a heart transplant? Yes. And so most of us sitting here today, if we were born with the special heart that Ava was born with, we would not be sitting on the show today. It was only until after 1980 that if you were born that you had the surgeries to do uh, the palliative reconstructive surgeries, the three surgeries that Ava has had done to make her circulation work has only been from the 1980s on. To this day, as you can see with Ava, she's a great example. We do remarkable. Uh, many kids have a fantastic outcome and they can do all the things that most kids can do in school and maybe they get a little tired, but they, they're, they're great energetic and big role models for all of us. Yeah, I don't really see you uh, not being energetic. You, pretty, you seem like you are on the go all the time. Yes. Okay, so there's some research that you're doing on children like Ava, is that right? Yes, and so Ava's a very lucky kid. Um, so when do she might need another surgery? Um, there's always the talk of possible transplant when you have a single ventricle kid. Um, and so all of these possibilities are out there. And not everybody is as lucky as Ava. So because of that, we have a research team now that's grown across the country that's really focused on how do we invent the next therapies? How do we create new products to make all the kids that were born like Ava as healthy and active yeah. as Ava's today. And that's the focus of what our, our research and innovation team is working on on a daily basis. Is it a genetic type of research or what are you looking at? Sure, and uh, you know, her family is an interesting case when it comes to genetics. Um, and so her brother has the condition. Uh, this is not- But not her twin brother. Not her twin brother, but her, um, her younger brother does. And so we are beginning to understand with her family and with others what causes the genetic makeup of this condition. And as we sit here today, we have a very good idea of what's happened sitting next to me genetically to cause this. Um, as we continue to do that with all families, we're beginning to understand how to not only identify it, but more importantly, how to predict who's gonna do well like Ava and who might not do well. And the people that are predicted not to do as well are the ones that also need cell-based therapies, um, mechanical solutions, other products that may be necessary to get them to the point where Ava has been able to do on her own. Are you working with stem cells at all? I mean, will, is there the potential there to someday actually grow a left ventricle for Ava? Yes. Um, so we have some really creepy cool stuff going on in the lab that we're super excited. Ava's been in the lab and has seen it firsthand for herself. Uh, so, of course she has. Of course she has. <laughs> um, when we use umbilical cord blood, which I'd like to say Ava was the first kid we ever collected umbilical cord blood on to do our research. She mm. was the first kiddo that we ever did that on for an HLHS baby at the time. So she's a true pioneer when it comes to research and innovation. That's Ava, amazing. What, yeah. <laughs> Ava, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do you know? A teacher. A teacher, not a doctor? <laughs> No, and do you want to teach little kids or older kids, or have you decided? I want to teach older kids. Hey, do you understand what Dr. Nelson is saying, that you are part of, he's not only your doctor, I mean, he's studying you. Mm-hmm. Do you like being part of that research? Mm-hmm. What does it mean to you? That other kids are part of it, but I was the first one and my brother Myers was the third one. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Dr. Nelson, do, does working with uh, young children like, lovely young children like Ava, does that inspire you? She's our superhero, as I've said before. Um, it's, uh, it's people like Ava that really defines why we do what we do. Um, we not only have used the cord blood on, on Ava and Miles and, and other families where we're now injecting them into the heart at the time of their open heart surgeries. We're planting fertilizer into their heart to make their hearts bigger and stronger. But we also are going all the way to bioengineering new hearts. And as you mentioned, the technology has now evolved since the last time we've talked that we're growing about a half of Ava's heart um, in cells in the lab right now in big spinner cultures. 
And that starts from a piece of skin biopsy that we've collected from Ava and her family. And we can engineer that into beating, contracting heart muscle, the cells that beat in her heart that are genetically identical to her heart. And we're on a, a work path with the FDA right now to get to the point where we can launch the first clinical trial where we actually start planting those seeds back into patients' hearts to make their heart bigger, better, and stronger. So the technology of the first generation of cell therapies, we've treated over 70 patients in these clinical trials across the nation. We're super proud of that. Um, but we also are now working towards new product development that can really fundamentally transform our surgical approach to these kids as we go forward. We need all kids with this diagnosis to live up to Ava's expectations. And you're growing a new heart for Ava in your lab. We have grown cells from families like Ava's, uh, from kids like Ava. Um, we have many of them going on, and, and that's how we learn how to perfect these systems on a daily basis. Wow. Pretty incredible. Congenital heart defects affect 40,000 babies every year in this country. But thanks to major advances in care, the outlook for babies born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, well, it's better than ever, and it sounds like it could be even better in the mm -hmm. future. Ava, you are terrific. Mm -hmm. Thanks and, for being here. Yeah, yeah what, okay. what do we say, Ava? Go. Go Hawkeye. There you oh, go. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Our thanks to Ava Weidel and Dr. Tim Nelson. Appreciate you being here. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks again, Ava. Thank you.